Hello and welcome into another episode of Lockdown Wolves. It is draft day. Round one of the NBA draft is tonight. Today, I'll give you the official final Lockdown Wolves big board. 12 players I would consider for the Wolves that both pick 27 and 37 on Thursday night. Half of the players on my board have got one minute long videos from Lockdown College hosts to tell you about the prospects, give you some NBA comps. The players that I like, the players that I like less on that on that uh, Lockdown Wolves big board. It's all upcoming on the show. Get you ready for the draft here tonight. Welcome in. You are Locked On Wolves. You are Locked On Timberwolves, your daily Minnesota Timberwolves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Wolves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Beacon. I'm the host of Locked On Wolves. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As playoffs wind down, they're over now. Stanley Cup playoffs finished last night. Finals have been done for about a week. The sports stop sportsing like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy hump day and happy NBA draft. Weirdly, on a Wednesday, it is just the first round. The second round is tomorrow night. Uh, but the Wolves do have a pick tonight. Pick 27. If you've been with us for the last week, I've given you 10 prospects that I like. On Actually, I think nine prospects I've liked on some level for the Wolves, or at least players mocked frequently to the Wolves. I'll give you three more to add to that today, and I'm going to give you my entire big board. So that'll be the show today. I'm going to go 1 through 12. 12 players that are options for the Wolves at 27 or 37 or somewhere in between if they move around the board. Um, and then I'm going to play you some clips here in the middle of, uh, you know, from some lockdown NBA hosts who have given uh, their take on some of these players at the uh, from the collegiate perspective and, and what they look like going to the NBA. So pack show today to get you ready for the draft. Also, uh, a reminder that the next show in your feed today is going to be the lockdown sp- uh, sports Minnesota Minnesota basketball party right here on this audio feed. If you're on YouTube, you got to jump over to Lockdown Sports Minnesota. We're going live Wednesday morning. That this will be over there on YouTube. But again, if you're on an audio feed right now, the next episode will be the Lockdown Sports Minnesota basketball party. Myself, Reggie Wilson from Care Eleven, uh, Tyler Metcalf, or excuse me, uh, Jack Borman, formerly of uh, Kata Supas. Tyler also did some stuff with us. He's formerly of Kata Supas as well, and. Uh, Ron Johnson, the Ron Johnson show with Sam Ekstrom. We're going to talk Wolves draft as well today. So tons of draft draft coverage. Of course, on Thursday show, we're going to talk about everything that happens Wednesday night. If the Wolves pick at 27, if they move around the board, we'll talk about all that on Thursday show as well. First of all, though, a big thank you for making Lockdown Wolves your first listen every day. Of course, this show is free and available everywhere. That includes YouTube, as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. Wherever you like to listen to podcasts, you can find Lockdown Wolves. You can also watch on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. And you can follow on X at Lockdown T-Wolves and also at B Beacon with two Bs, two Es, C-K-E-N. All right. So I'm going to start here at the top. I'm going to start at the top of my big board for the Wolves. And as we go through, I'm going to kind of note like, hey, this, this is the order in which I like them. It doesn't mean I'm going to take, like, I'll, I'll, I'll tip my hand here. I've got a guy who often is mocked in the middle, late third round. I've got actually a couple of guys there that I have, like, fifth or sixth on my board. I'm not saying the Wolves should take them at 27. I'm saying they should consider it. And if they think they can move back and still get them and pick up an asset along the way, future second round or whatever, fine, do that. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of note that, too, if this is somebody who's not frequently mocked this high, but I like them more than a player who maybe is going to go at 19 which is the case. And, and I'll, I'll explain that along the way. So we'll start at the top of my board and I'm going to, I'm going to first play the video from our locked on college host, locked on, uh, locked on college basketball. And then I'll tell you a little bit more about what I think about this player. Number one on my big board is actually one of the first players I profiled last week is Baylor Shireman of Creighton. So we'll go ahead and, and run that video now from Locked On at College Basketball. Baylor Shireman, Creighton. He's one of the best shooters in the draft looking to make his mark, but he's got more than that to offer. I'm Isaac Shade from Locked On College Basketball. Shireman's 23 years old. He's a 6'7", 205-pound left-handed shooting guard small forward. He really took things to the next level last year for Creighton. 18 and a half points, nine boards, and three and a half assists. Combine that with his ability to shoot 38% on 8.3 attempts, and he's an intriguing look. 
Unanimous first team all big East last year. Teams need shooting and Baylor Shireman's got it. Plus, his quick release and high release will allow him to get it off at the NBA level. But even when the shot's not falling, his facilitation and rebounding will allow him to contribute. His length is adequate, but his size and strength are there. His athleticism is lacking, so defending will be difficult. But Luke is out here making it. Give me Sam Hauser as a comp. For more on Baylor Shireman and all things college basketball, follow and subscribe to Locked On College Basketball on YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. All right, so Baylor Shireman is 6'6 six, six wing, 6'8 six, wingspan, great catch-and-shoot player, really, really good range. He's a lefty, he can shoot off the dribble, he can catch and shoot. The way I described him last week on the show, and I'm going to go quick on some of these guys here today, I think he's like a slow -mo, a version of slow-mo with more juice off the dribble and clearly a much better shooter. Actually, in pick and roll, relatively limited frequency at Creighton. He was 96 percentile in the country at the collegiate level. 1.28 points per possession as a pick and roll ball handler this last year at Creighton, which is a obviously 96 percentile, an outstanding mark. But he's also a really good catch and shoot guy. 78th percentile catch and shoot, really good range. I would describe him as slow mo with more juice and with a jumper. I think he's got a ceiling as a solid starter at the NBA level. I think he is probably best cast as an off-ball guy who's well-rounded offensively. He can do some other stuff. Like, you're not going to give him the keys of the second unit as a rookie. But down the road, you might be able to. And immediately, I think he's a secondary creator. Uh, I think you can plug him in there with your second unit. He'll end up with the ball in his hands at the end of a possession and make the right call, whether it's a shot, uh, trying to create off the dribble for himself or others. Um Again, well-rounded offensively is how I would describe Baylor Shireman. And I see him as slow-mo with the jumper. And, and certainly, I don't think he'll be the defender that Kyle Anderson is. Certainly not from day one. I think uh, he's certainly a, a, a modest athlete, good size, good understanding of where to be defensively. I think sometimes he gets out of position on the – or I shouldn't say out of position. He's a half-step slow on the ball. He doesn't stay in front of the ball super well at times. But again, he understands what to do, and he's got good size. He's a good team defender. So – if the Wolves were to let slow-mo walk, bring in Baylor Shireman, he's not going to be slow-mo from day one. I think offensively, he ultimately can give you more, maybe even by next spring. Maybe it takes a year or two. He's going to give you more than Kyle Anderson. Scoring, and I think he'll be just as good of a passer at some point. If it's not to be, I don't think it'll be immediately, but at some point he will be. He's not going to be as effective defensively. I should also point out he's a really good rebounder. Um, for his, you know, size again, size is good. Like if you're playing him at the three, six, 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 eight is fine. But if you're going to play him at, you know, small ball four, I think he could rebound his spot at the NBA level. He's got a nose for the ball. He again, modest athlete, but I think there's enough athleticism there combined with the size, the nose for the ball, the understanding, the want to all that stuff. I think Shireman is a best case scenario for Minnesota. And I will tell you our locked on NBA mock draft that we did. He went one pick before Minnesota. He went 26 to Memphis locked on Grizzlies. Got him right before I picked. I'll tell you here in a second who I got at, uh, I actually got the number two player on my board at 27 for the wolves, but Shireman, like his range is probably, I think he's rising on boards. He's probably somewhere in the 20 to 30 range. It seems to me, it feels like it's an outside shot. He's available at 27, but there is a shot and I like him. I think he's, almost a plug and play for Kyle Anderson, at least offensively for Minnesota. And we'll give them a little more juice off the bench. Number two on my big board is Johnny Furphy wing out of university of Florida. We'll go ahead and roll the video from lockdown Florida or lockdown Gators here uh, right now. Johnny Furphy from Kansas is a player perfectly suited for the NBA. I'm Dirk Johnson from Locked On Jayhawks. He's a six foot eight ish wing who, at 19 years old, was a soaring late riser. Went from nearly being a future high school recruiting class to reclassifying to showing flashes off the bench to then starting in January to then from January through February going off with 12 points per game on 38% from three. Now, it was a mixed bag over his final 13 games, just 28% from three there. And when Kansas became more relied on him with a more injured team, you saw some deficiencies in the half court, creating his own shots and consistency, as well as on the defensive end, though there was always a high level of want to and high effort level on that end. But overall, the shooting and transition play make you think he's going to be a good fit for the NBA. For more on Furphy and all things Kansas Jayhawks, follow and subscribe to Locked On Jayhawks on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. All right, Johnny Furphy. Out of Florida, 6'8 with a 6'8 wingspan. He's a really good catch-and-shoot player. Very good size. 
Uh, very good athleticism, understanding of spacing, really impressive understanding of spacing offensively and in transition. In transition, he was 91st percentile in the NCAA this year in terms of uh, in terms of scoring and knows what to do. Again, spacing, understanding uh, both in transition and in the half court. Knows where to be to get the catch and shoot opportunity. Knows where to be to get the hit ahead pass in transition. He's really, really good in the open floor, uh, especially without the ball in his hands. He's a good cutter in the half court. Again, understands spacing. Knows not to crowd the paint. Knows not to, uh, you know, cut into the space of the ball handler. Knows, uh, you know, if he's got a cutter from the other side, not to cut into the same area of the floor. I think all of the above, it, it, it it's perfect for an NBA role player. The understanding how to do those things, but also the size, athleticism, and shooting ability. He does not score off the dribble. He only made one three-pointer all season at Florida that was not assisted. Uh, he does not get to the rim very often. Again, he doesn't score off the dribble. And uh, the athleticism that he clearly has, he doesn't necessarily show it in the half court, um, which is a little bit of a, a little bit of a, um, I don't know, it's it's notable. Um, for some reason, I said he's Florida. He's not University of Florida. I said locked on Gators too. Locked on Jayhawks, whatever. Locked on Jayhawks. It matters. I know if any Jayhawks people are watching this, if you're a Kansas fan, I'm sorry. I know he went to Kansas. Uh, Johnny Furphy, University of Kansas, locked on Jayhawks. Um, it just hit me that I, I introduced that in the wrong way too. Anyway, um, I think he's long enough as a player. I think he's smart enough to be a solid defender. I, I think he's a little slow footed. It looks, I think the way I described him on the show last week, he's a little mechanical and deliberate. Um, even though he's a good athlete, when he gets into a stance, he doesn't always get all the way into a stance. And I think he could be a, a bit deliberate, even if he plays hard and tries defensively. I think there, I don't say there's a limit. I think he certainly could improve because of the athleticism, but I don't think he's going to be certainly not a stopper. I, I'm not even sure he's a, he's a net neutral defender from day one in the NBA. Uh, he has really good activity on the glass. If he's going to play a three in the NBA, I think there's a lot to like, about what he can do on the glass as well. The athleticism is really good. I think he's nearly a plug and play NBA rotation player. He's kind of your quintessential role player where he fills in all the cracks. He can do all of those different things. Um, you know, uh, again, catch and shoot athleticism, transition scoring, a solid defender uh, upside there because the athleticism and the shooting ability. Uh, I like him as a role player. And, and uh, you know, I mentioned Baylor Shireman as a potential Kyle Anderson replacement. Furphy to me is somewhere between like the Nikhil Alexander Walker role and, and Obviously, he's not initiated offense like Alexander Walker, but somewhere between that and the Kyle Anderson role. If the Wolves are to draft Furphy, he probably gets the Kyle Anderson minutes, maybe sits behind a Josh Minot or somebody year one, but he's got more shooting than Minot. He's not quite as big. You know, I'm not comparing those two necessarily, but that like ninth guy, that role, Furphy, I think could play it. I think he could be uh, impactful there pretty early on. All right. Next, I want to get into, we'll go a little bit quicker here through the middle of the board and the end of the board. I want to get to some more videos, uh, including for number three on my big board. So we'll do that here next. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Do you watch Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day long? If so, no doubt you have to turn down the volume because of all the shouting. Instead, make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the Amazon Fire TV channels app, which is free. It's all part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. All right, player number three. 
on my Locked On Wolves big board. Number one is Baylor Shireman of Creighton. Number two is Johnny Furphy of Kansas. Number three is Keyshawn George out of the University of Miami. Keyshawn George is a wing, six foot seven, six ten wingspan. Let's go ahead and get to our uh, the, the video that I have, the scouting report, if you will, the one minute from our friends uh, on the college side. We'll do that here right now. Miami Hurricanes combo guard Keyshawn George is ready to start his pro career after a one and done season in Coral Gables. I am Alex Dono from Locked On Canes. Keyshawn George's length and versatility make him a high ceiling NBA prospect. He's six foot eight, an excellent shooter, very good ball handler. Those attributes led Miami head coach Jim Laranega to use him extensively at the point. George played in 30 games, started 16 as a freshman, averaging 7.8 points, three rebounds, 2.2 assists per game. He shot over 42% from the floor, just under 41% from three. Keyshawn George was born in Switzerland, played in France before, for four years before joining Hurricanes. George might need some G League seasoning before he's ready to be a full-time NBA contributor, but the potential is certainly there. A player comp for him is Joe Ingles. For more on Keyshawn George and all things Hurricanes, follow and subscribe to Locked on Canes on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so there you have it, Keyshawn George. And what I like about him is the projectability, the NBA body that he already has and what he can do longer term. I think he's already a, he's an outstanding ball handler for his size. He's a really good shooter. Um, the comp given there at the end of the video, and also, by the way, the comp that's on the ringer.com is Joe Ingles. I don't mind that. I think there's more offensive upside. I don't know that he's going to be quite as good of a shooter as Joe Ingles, but he may actually be overall a better, well-rounded offensive player. The way I described him last week on Lockdown Wolves when I did the you know segment-long profile on him was I see him as almost a better passing, maybe a little bit more raw defensively, but a better passing version of Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Uh, a raw defensive game, but again, the tools, the size to do it. Offensive tools as well. I think he's going to be a, a much better shooter from day one than Alexander Walker was at the NBA level. He doesn't score in the paint at this point. He doesn't do much in between, but he certainly looks the part of an NBA player and has some projectability as uh, almost a, a point forward type. I think he's a three that maybe plays some two at the NBA level, especially for a bigger team like the Wolves. But again, six seven, six ten wingspan. I again, we're kind of looking for that Kyle Anderson role. These these none of these three guys, Sherman, Furphy, or George, none of these guys are guards. Um, and they're not taking Alexander Walker's job. They're not taking Nas Reed's job. They're going to be the eighth or ninth man. And I see them as, you know, kind of that Swiss army knife type player that could play the three or the four in the case of George, maybe the two. Uh, I think Shireman, Furphy and George all kind of fit into that wing category and I'd be fine with any of them. And, and they would all be legitimate options at 27. Um, they all could go a little earlier. I think generally Furphy's mocked last of the three or well, actually Shireman's kind of a bigger range. Sherman's feel like 20 to 30 Furphy's in like the 22 to 28 range. A lot of the time. And George is a little bit higher. Any of those three at 27 would be totally fine with me. Number four on my big board is Cam Christie out of the university of Minnesota. I spent some time on him. I think it was Monday's show. Uh, raw certainly only played one year at college at Minnesota. So it's not like he played, he played tough competition, in the big 10, but um, you're projecting this one out. What I like is I think he could be impactful from day one as a shooter. He was 93rd percentile in the NCAA catch and shoot, 64% effective field goal percentage on catch and shoot opportunities, uh, solid in pick and roll as a ball handler, 84th percentile there. He's really good in transition and has great overall instincts, sh uh, fluid as a shooter. He doesn't absorb contact well on either end of the floor in the physicality of the NBA and the, the wear and tear of a season I think could be tough for him. He's not necessarily plug and play. I think if they pick him, they're looking to fill the, the Kyle Anderson role with somebody else. And Christie's maybe on the fringes of the rotation in year one, but the projectability there, I think the upside is certainly as a starter. And I like him as a prospect. This isn't just like, Hey, draft the Minnesota kid. I actually think he's going to be a good pro. Uh, it, it's just going to take maybe a little bit more time with some of these other guys that, that I ranked ahead of him. Number five is an example of a player that I would not necessarily take at 27. I would absolutely take Shireman, Furphy, George. I'd, I'd take Kim Christie at 27. I think he probably goes a little after that, but I'd take him if the other three are off the board. Jamal Shedd is a second rounder. He's very unlikely to go in the first round. He could go 29 or 30. I could see somebody at the end of the first round saying, we think this guy has the chops to defend and run an offense at the NBA level. We'll give him a guaranteed deal. If I'm Minnesota and he's there at 37 and my top four guys are gone, I see if I could trade back and pick him in, at the beginning of the second round or, or you know, 
at least save a little bit of money on a draft slot and move down a little bit uh, and draft him later. Jamal Shedd is small. He's six one, six three wingspan, point guard, uh, but he's really tough. I just talked about him on Tuesday's show, so listen to that for a bit more conversation about Shedd. He's a fantastic passer, great attitude, super tough. I think he's pound for pound extremely strong, uses his low center of gravity very well on both ends of the floor. I love him at 37. If he's there at 37, I take him in a heartbeat. Unless, you know, one of the four guys that I already listed is somehow there at 20 or 37, which I think is unlikely. I love Jamal Shedd as a prospect. I don't think he's got a very high ceiling. I think his ceiling is really good backup point guard. I think his floor is third point guard at the NBA level. He's a good enough defender and a good enough passer. I think he could easily be in a Jordan McLaughlin role for somebody, but I think he could be better than that because he's that good defensively. And he's such a good passer. I mean, it's shades of like, you know, some of the more savant like passers we've seen. Savant's a strong word, but really, really impressive passing ability for Jamal Shedd. I love him at 37. I trade down to try and still get him if he's there when if I'm the Wolves at 27. Number six is a player I haven't talked about yet on the show. That's Enrique Freeman out of uh Akron. And Freeman's a late riser. Most mocks, most big boards had him like in the 50s or 60s, like late second round to undrafted. But there's a lot of buzz around him as a potential late first round pick. And uh, our guy, Tyler Metcalf, who I referenced on accident earlier on No Ceilings on their podcast, talked about, actually, I think he took him for the Wolves in his mock draft at 27. Um, that would be a surprise still because he's an undersized guy who averaged a double-double for, I think, three straight years in the back. Um, but he was the best rebounder in the country this season. Number one rebounds per game, number one in rebound rate, uh, top five, I think, in win shares in the country, which, again, is influenced heavily by rebounding, but also efficiency, uh, again, in the MAC and undersized. He averaged uh, 18 or almost 19 and 13 this year, 17 and 11 his year prior. And his sophomore year, which was actually his third year, uh, he spent five years at Akron, only played the seven games as a freshman, the COVID short year. He was 13 and 11. So he went 13 and 11, 17 and 11, and 19 and 13. Field goal percentage, 63% from the floor at college. He did not shoot threes really until his senior year. Didn't attempt one at all, like his first two and a half years. Ended up shooting 37% last year on just an attempt and a half per game. And reportedly, he's knocking them down in workouts. He's another glue type guy. He's a Johnny Furphy type player. He doesn't have the shot of Furphy unless what he's showing in workouts is what he's going to do in games. But he does a lot of the other stuff really well and has more physicality, is a better rebounder. Um, again, 6'7". But the wingspan is 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 freakish. It's seven two. Um, so six seven with a seven two wingspan. Uh so beyond what you know, Furphy's six eight with a six eight wingspan. So there's things to like about Freeman more than Furphy. He's gonna rebound better, he's gonna probably well, he will defend better from day one. The scoring chops, if you watch Freeman in college, a lot of it was low post moves against smaller guys or less skilled guys, either, you know, bigger guys that he could out craft in the post out finesse, or it was smaller guys that he could overpower and use the athleticism and length. I don't necessarily think that that's going to work in the NBA. There's some shades of Kenneth Freed when it comes to that. Um, but I think he is a, a going to be a good defender and a good glue guy, a good potential NBA guy. If that shot is for real, there's a real shot he sneaks into the first round. Again, I wouldn't necessarily take him at 27, but if you could trade back and get him, if you can get him at 37, please do if you're the Timberwolves. All right, I have him six on my big board. We're going to have to cruise through the end of this. I've got six more guys to list. I've got a couple more videos to show as well. Uh, we'll get to all of that here next. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our title sponsors at FanDuel. I love sports. I love them a ton, and I never want them to stop, but playoffs have wound down. This is kind of the dead time of the sports calendar once we get past the NBA draft. Of course, you get 4th of July and the excitement around baseball, of course, middle of the WNBA season really right now, uh, and then you get into free agency for NBA, and it just like MLB All-Star break is where it really slows down. It's really just WNBA. There's nothing else until NFL training camps and all that stuff. The sports, quite frankly, are not sportsing like we want them to right now. But FanDuel lets you keep the sports going whenever you want. All you have to do is open the app and dream up bets any time that you're in the mood. This summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. 
All right, six more spots. I've only gotten through six so far. This is taking a little bit longer than I wanted it to. So we're going to cruise through these last six, most of whom I've talked about on the show already. So real quick, number one, Baylor Shireman at Crate. Number two, Johnny Furphy from Kansas. Number three, Keyshawn George out of Miami. Cam Christie from Minnesota, number four. Jamal Shedd from Houston, number five. Number six, Enrique Freeman from Akron. Number seven, Juan Nunez. I talked about him, I think, on Monday on the show. 6'4", point guard, 6'6". Six, six. Wings uh, played in Germany last year from Spain originally. Great size and feel. I, you know, the Wolves have reportedly had interest for him at 37. Really good frame. He's not a very good shooter. And I don't think he's quick enough to immediately be a solid defender at the NBA level. He's so good in the pick and roll and has such good size that if the Wolves think they can develop his shot, I could see them taking a stab at him at 37. I would take Shed ahead of him. Um, again, much smaller. Yes, three inches shorter, three inches shorter wingspan. But I think the defense and the passing ability, I think the passing ability is nearly as good and the defense is much better. So I think you can live with the size difference. But anyway, Nunez at seven. I'm okay with him for the Wolves at 37. Number eight on my board, Terrence. And again, if I'm at 27 and the six guys before are gone, I could trade back and get Nunez. I would love it. Terrence Shannon Jr. I have at eight. He's probably going to go before 27, but I have him on the board because it's possible he's there at 27. I'd be fine if they took him. Uh, he's got an NBA body, absorbs contact well on both ends, great in transition, doesn't create his own shot, great in the half court. Again, an absolute terror in transition. I don't want to undersell that. He's not a consistent scorer in the half court. I think he's a good defender, solid steal rate, but that actually decreased. Texas Tech to Illinois, he played his last series at Illinois. The steal rate decreased a little over his last couple of years. I worry about his want to all the time, the consistency. He, of course, had the off court, was cleared of the sexual assault charges, uh, or I shouldn't say, I guess technically was clear. He was found not guilty. Um, so that due diligence will be done on the team side. Certainly as a prospect, he looks the part of an NBA prospect. I worry about the consistency and lack thereof and the half court creation, the lack of that for a guy who's six, seven with a six, nine wingspan overall, a solid prospect. I think he's probably a fringe rotation guy at the NBA level with good upside. I, I just, You'd like him to do a bit more in the half court versus just dominate and transition. Number nine on my board is, oh, and I should, actually, I've got a video for him too. So let's do the video for Terrence Shannon. We'll do that here right now. Terrence Shannon Jr., now that the uh, distractions are over, just how good can he be at the NBA level? My name is Sonny Verma. I'm the host of Lock on Illini. Terrence Shannon Jr. physically is already an NBA player. He's about six foot six, 225 pounds, six foot eight wingspan. He's capable of scoring at any level and efficiently shooting 48% from the field last year. He knows how to get to the free throw line, averaging almost nine free throws a game last year, and hitting 80% of them. He today can step foot on the NBA and provide the 3 and D skill set that all NBA teams are looking for. He's one of the most athletic players in the draft, and he focuses just as much on the defensive side as does on offense. His upside might be limited with the fact that he's going to be 24 years old by the time the season is going to be starting, but if I were an NBA GM who had a mid to late first round draft pick, I would feel comfortable drafting Chen and knowing Chen is probably going to be balling well into a second NBA contract. For more Illini information, follow me on Locked on Illini on your favorite podcast network or right here on YouTube. All right, uh, KJ Simpson out of Colorado, point guard mocked to Minnesota on the Ringer podcast, at, or excuse me, the Ringer Dot com on their mock draft at 27 point guard out of Colorado, six, two, six, four wingspan. We'll go ahead and run the video for KJ Simpson. The King of clutch himself, KJ Simpson at Colorado is in the NBA draft and will make one team extremely happy. I'm Kevin Borba host of locked on buffs. And I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about KJ. Simpson. He's a 21 year old guard that was named a two all pack 12 conference teams. One of which was a first team conference nod this past season after he averaged almost 20 points, six rounds and five assists per game while also showing the ability to be as clutch as they come. He has ice in his veins. He sent those Florida Gators packing in the NCAA tournament with his game-winning shot. His NBA comparison has to be Fred Van Vliet. He's an undersized guard that's fearless and will shoot any shot that's open. Even if it's not, he's going to find his shot, and he's going to get to the rim, shows no fear, and does whatever is needed for the team. He is someone who could lead an NBA team's second unit right away and eventually could be a starter. If you want more information on KJ Simpson and all things Colorado, follow and subscribe to Lock on Buffs on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. My notes on KJ Simpson, I think he's a little small. I know he's slightly bigger than Jamal Shedd, who I like more. I think KJ Simpson's athletic enough. He's got good pick and roll feel, good half court feel overall as a solid score, can get off contested jumpers and make it. The three point shooting 
jumped like 14 points from year three to, or excuse me, year two to year three in college. If that's for real, I think he sticks as a backup point guard and the upside is probably a little greater than Jamal Shedd, but I think the floor is lower because I don't think he's as good defensively. I don't think it's close. Even if he's slightly bigger, I, I think it's most likely that he's able to hold his own and he'll be, if he can hold his own defensively, shoot the ball league average or better as a, as a three point shooter, I think he sticks as a solid backup, but I think the floor is a little bit lower than shed. And if you're a conference finals team, a championship contender like Minnesota, you want a sure thing. And I think shed, despite the size, he is only an inch shorter an inch shorter wingspan. I like him more than KJ Simpson. So if I'm Minnesota, I would lean toward shed. If the choices between the two, I have Simpson at nine on my Timberwolves board. Number 10 on my board is Bub Carrington. Carrington is very likely to go ahead of Minnesota. He's many people think he's the best kind of lead guard in the draft. Uh, he's mocked like on the ringer. They have him at 20. Um, I don't know. I, like he, he could score from everywhere. Really? Uh, he doesn't really get to the rim a ton, which is a little bit of a thing. And the three point shooting isn't consistent. He was just 30 under 33% this year. Um, but if he builds out a little bit, if he gets a little bit thicker, he's six, four with a six, nine wingspan. Um, I think he can be a good two-way guard. Um, and if for some reason he was there at 27, I'd obviously be fine with Minnesota taking him. But pound for pound, I prefer Shed. I actually prefer Simpson as prospects. Uh, but I have to mention Carrington because he's a guard that potentially could fall to 27. Uh, next on my board, number 11. We're almost through it here. That was 10. Number 11, I have Tyler Kolick, who also very likely will be gone. There's rumors that Phoenix promised him in the early 20s. Out of Marquette, he's only 6'1", 6'3", wingspan. He's a really good shooter. Uh, he was 90 something percentile, 69% effective field goal percentage on catch and shoot three pointers, which is great. Really, really good feel in the pick and roll. Maybe the best pick and roll passer in the draft. Although I think Jamal shed may have something to say about that. He's not very good off the dribble though, as a shooter, um, has a floater, good touch in the paint can be crafty, but the craftiness only gets you so far with limited athleticism and size at the NBA level, uh, pick and roll ball handler, 69th percentile scoring there. I think he's a little overrated as a prospect. I don't love him as a backup for Minnesota, but again, if somehow he's there at 27 and somehow the 10 guys before him are gone, or if he's at 37 and the other 10 guys are gone, I think Kolek will be a, has a shot at being a solid NBA backup, but I actually would, I would bet on Simpson. I would bet on shed. I apparently would bet on Nunez. I like those guys more as prospects uh, than I do Tyler Kolek. I, and I, I will see. I, I just, I don't know that Tyler Kolick is what people want him to be at the NBA level. Uh, last on my board, I've got one more video for you. And that is uh, somebody who I hadn't detailed previously on the show until right now. And I'm not going to spend a ton of time on him. I'm going to roll you the video, but Kyle Filipowski out of Duke uh, mocked typically in the early twenties to early thirties. There's a big range there. He's kind of the only like big that we've talked about at 611 with the 611 wingspan. He's more of a point forward than anything else, uh, a point power forward, really. Uh, so we'll go ahead and roll the video here on Kyle Filipowski. Duke big man Kyle Filipowski benefited from playing second season with Blue Devils, but now he's ready to begin his NBA career. I am Alex Don from Locked On ACC. Filipowski is a proven commodity as a seven footer who can flex his game out of the perimeter. He enjoyed an All-American season in 2024 as a sophomore. Started all 72 games over his two years with Duke. Filipowski improved his overall shooting percentages and three-point percentages in his second year. In 2024, he shot 34.8% for three, 50.5% overall, and he hauled in over eight rebounds per game. Kyle Filipowski can help an NBA team immediately. The question is, will he develop into a star or just a steady contributor? common player comp for him is Kelly Olenek. For more on Kyle Filipowski and all things Duke, follow and subscribe to Locked on ACC on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, so Kyle Filipowski, good ball handler, can can run the offense for you if, if you want him to. Uh, might be a good role player in the NBA because he can do all sorts of different things. Uh, I think he'll be a good three-point shooter at the NBA level. He only was 35% on kind of middle of the road of three-plus attempts per game in college. Um, I don't, he's not going to hold up in the paint. He's not going to obviously score in the post. He's not going to, I don't think offensive rebound and be impactful there, but there are some things he can do on the perimeter that are intriguing based on his size. And, you know, the wolves don't need him because they have Nas Reed. Uh, I don't think he's, he's certainly not the defender or I don't think the passer that Kyle Anderson is. 
I could see that maybe he's certainly bigger than Kyle Anderson. Maybe if you draft him, that's what you're thinking you're going to get. Um, he's almost 21 years old. I don't know that you can get anything near what Kyle Anderson did for you the last two years in year one, but Filipowski maybe gets there in a couple of years. So again, this is, he's number 12 on a 12 man big board. He's fine if they end up with him, uh, but not, not necessarily where I would look. And obviously if the Wolves draft him, I'll spend more time you know, talking about what he would bring to the table. If, if we're sitting here 24 hours from now and he's the pick, we'll see. Uh, so anyway, that's my big board. That's my 12. I'll run down it real quick. One more time and then tell you what we're doing here over the next day or so. Baylor Scheidman out of crate number one. Johnny Furphy from Kansas, number two. Not Georgia, or excuse me, not, not Florida, Kansas. Number three, Keyshawn George out of Miami. Number four, Kim Christie from University of Minnesota. Jamal Shedd I have at five out of Houston. Juan Nunez, point guard, played in Germany last year from Spain. I have him at seven. Oh, sorry, I skipped over Enrique Freeman from Akron. I have him six. Terrence Shannon Jr. from Illinois, a five-year player. I have him at eight. KJ Simpson from Colorado, nine. Bub Carrington at 10. Tyler Kolick from Marquette, 11. And, uh, uh, my goodness, Kyle Filipowski. Blinked on his first name. Kyle Filipowski. I have 12th out of Duke. So, that's the big board. Later today, we will have the Minnesota Basketball Party talking about the draft. Curious to get Jack's thoughts on the draft. Curious to get Ron's thoughts as well as Reggie from Care 11. What those guys have to say about potential picks for Minnesota. We'll talk Chris Finch's contract extension and more. We'll also talk a little free agency as well because by this time next week, free agency is underway. Tonight, after the draft, we'll have a video on social with my immediate reaction following the Wolves pick. And then I'll have a show Thursday. We'll in detail talk Wolves pick. And then Thursday night, second round. So I will have conversation on that on Friday's show. We'll look to get some guests in either from the college side of Locked On or some draft experts to talk about guys the Wolves end up taking in this draft, assuming they come out of it with two picks. So lots to come in the coming days here on the show. We are still daily throughout the month of July. So throughout free agency, throughout summer league, all that, we are daily. Um, so make sure you're following and subscribe to Locked On Wolves. A big thank you for making this show your first listen every day. Of course, it's free and available everywhere. That includes YouTube as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. Wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find Locked On Wolves. You can also watch on the Locked On Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon at Fire TV. And you can follow on X at Locked On T Wolves and also at B Beacon with two B's, two E's, C K. Ian. Of course, the Lockdown Wolves podcast is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Remember, the Lockdown Network is your local experts on all the biggest stories. Once again, I'm Ben Beacon. This is the Lockdown Wolves podcast, and we'll catch you next time.